So I want to do a work example of simple hypothesis testing from last time. This is kind of where I ended up in the last lesson. And I want to just mention that when I have these kind of standard costs, when basically uh, I have zero for these equal ones and one for these unequal ones, then when I have this decision rule, this is called the MAP or maximum a posteriori decision rule, which I think we talked about in a previous lesson, although not immediately in the previous lesson, but we used that terminology before. So here's the setup, and this is basically the kind of problem that you'd see as one of your first communication systems kinds of problems. So I have a binary communication system. What this means is that the system is transmitting either plus ones or minus ones, okay? And I'm transmitting the same bit n times in a row. That bit every time goes through the channel. And what the channel does is it adds noise. And this noise is going to be Gaussian with, say, mean 0 and sigma equal to 1. Okay, so that's noising up these bits that go through the channel. And so it used to be a plus one could turn into 1.25 or 7.89 with very high, very, very low probability, right? But what comes out is some uh, number that is a real number, right? Not just a discrete one or zero value. And so the, the setup is I transmit the same bit n times. I observe these n values. And now I want a decision rule that says, Am I in the plus one case or am I in the minus one case, right? So what are my hypotheses? My hypothesis H0 is that I transmitted n uh, minus one bits, okay? And my alternate hypothesis is that I transmitted n plus one bits, okay? So what do I need to do? I need to characterize the hypotheses in each case, right? So the PDF of these n numbers under the null hypothesis is basically, well, I have to evaluate that assuming that I'm in the minus one case. So I have n independent um, bits, and then I'm going to have the mean be minus ones, that's like xi plus one squared, right? So this is skipping a couple of steps, but this is just basically saying, well, I'm assuming that all the bits are coming across and noised up independently. I guess I should have said the noise is independent every time. And so this is just the product of a bunch of those PDFs. And in the same way, if I'm in the H1 case, that means that my mean is plus one, So this is my PDF there, okay? Now, I have to compute the likelihood ratio, which is basically the ratio between this on the top and this on the bottom. So the, the 1 over 2 pi stuff is going to cancel out, and what I'm going to get is basically um, and I'm being a little bit brief here, where x now represents all the data that I saw. I'm going to have e to the minus 1 half, the sum of the numerator part is this, and the denominator part is this. And I can simplify things a little bit. So I'm actually going to get xi squared um, minus xi squared. So those are going to cancel out. And I'm going to get a minus xi and another minus xi here. So basically, I'm going to have um, a two minus two xi and another minus two xi, and the ones are going to cancel too. So actually, this is pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to have is e to the uh, this sum two xi. Okay. And we talked about this before that actually, since the um, log function is monotonically increasing with x, that maximizing the likelihood is the same as maximizing the log likelihood, right? So in some sense, what I can do is, instead of having a decision on the likelihood ratio by itself, sometimes it's helpful to look at what they call the log likelihood ratio. So if I take the log of both sides, this is like saying I have the log of the likelihood ratio is equal to um, just the sum of my numbers. And then I'm going to have a decision rule that says, 
Well, I should choose uh, H1 if I'm above some threshold and H0 if I'm below that threshold. And the threshold from before is basically going to be the log of the ratio of the priors. Assuming that I don't have any costs, right? If I had the unequal costs, I could throw them in here too, right? And now I could say, okay, well, then what if I have um, the same prior? If I have P of H0 is equal to P of H1 is equal to a half, then I have log of 1, which is 0. And so my threshold is basically saying, if I add up these numbers and they're positive, choose the plus 1 case. If I add up the numbers and they're negative, choose the minus 1 case, right? And that actually makes a lot of sense. And so in some sense, what I have is a decision rule that says, um, you know, here's my, you know, here's my sum. Anything on this side, I choose H1. Anything on this side, I choose, uh, well, I guess I've mixed up which one was which. Yeah, anything on this side, I choose H0, right? But that threshold could shift depending on this number, right? So suppose that this turns out to be a positive number, right? That's saying that H0 is um, the, the prior probability of H0 is more than the prior probability of H1, right? Then I have a log of some positive number, and that means that this number now is going to be positive, and that's going to shift my, you know, situation over here, so I'm going to be generally more inclined to accept H0 than H1 because the prior probability tells me that that's likely to be the case, right? And so this tau slides back and forth depending on the ratio of my priors. So hopefully that gives you some sense of kind of like a real world systems kind of application of this stuff.